Hello there guys, it's Joey and this video is going to be concerning the Ogum sale or Willow. It's the last day of the given Celtic tree calendar month of Willow today and I've been meaning to do the Willow videos for probably two weeks now and things have just kept turning up and I decided in the end okay we'll do it on the very last day and we'll talk all about it and that way we can include information we can talk a little bit about suggested moon phase type and geez working with it throughout the month because in fairness the Celtic tree calendar is a fairly modern I'm not going to say invention because it's very possible it was based on a lot of study into the druidic way of life uh, but there is there is debate about whether or not it was ever practiced by the druids of old uh, or whether it was graves in his white goddess work that sort of knitted together different ideas and, and sort of created it so it's not the end of the world this is my excuse I'm sticking to it that it's taken me this long to get round to the video videos because I have to do the guided meditation to connect to the energy of the willow tree which will follow this video and I wanted to do them before we move into Hawthorne because Hawthorne is my probably my favorite ogum and tree But what I was trying to say, very inadequately apparently, <laughs> God, it's going to be one of those days, it already has been one of those days, um, is that you can seek to connect to the energy of particular ogum all the way through the year. And working with the particular energies of trees is always a worthwhile endeavour. So the information is here, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> So I'm going to read through my notes to try and keep me on this linear format. So the first part is a quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson. I am a willow of the wilderness, loving the wind that bent me. Planet associated with the willow is moon. The element associated with willow is water. Symbolism, resonance and harmony, stone, moonstone, we'll talk about that in a minute because obviously I've got a fair few more stones in shot than just moonstone. Birds, hawk, snowy owl, colour silver, deities, personify, Hecate, Caradwen, Artemis, Selene, Luna, Diana and Brigid and Sabat Beltane, uh, because Beltane falls within the, the month. Magical properties, new moon magic, creativity, fertility, female rites of passage, inspiration, binding, emotion, love, love divination, protection and healing, also known as the tree of immortality because of its ability to regrow from a fallen branch in moist ground. A wand made from willow has many uses, sleep with it and have more vivid more vivid dreams. Use it to draw down the moon. Protection for the underworld journey. Magical witches brooms are traditionally made with, from a willow or branch. Willow asks you to bend with her into the path of retrieval. Follow the labyrinth trail, connect with the power of wisdom and the rhythm of your soul, and return to your ordinary world strengthened. You will find that your awareness of your purpose is strong and your intent cannot be broken by anyone else. An old spell for love given by Sandra Kings is to take three long supple branches of willow, braid them together and fashion into a circle with pink, red or white ribbon. Place a picture or name of the person you love in the centre and place it next to the bed. From the Celtic Oracle, Tree Oracle, which is the, the cards that I have in the back there. The willow stands for the female and lunar rhythms of life. She is water-seeking, 
Water and the tidal movements of the sea are governed by the pull of the moon. The moon in its monthly rhythms is female. Tree magic from Gillian Kemp. Your inner, your fertile inner strength, like that of the willow, is inexhaustible and is flexible to bend around obstacles. Your desire can be woven into shape as the willow is pliable and used to make baskets. This is the one I really like. This is the, the description of Willow that really sort of sits with how I feel about it. Uh, Willow teaches us the lesson of life in death. Endings are just beginnings with, and with new growth comes change. Willow helps us to integrate change into our lives and reminds us to allow inspiration to enter our lives at such times. Inspiration can come from the smallest or most unlikely sources, so keep an open mind at all times. Willow is strongly linked with the moon, and you would do well to coordinate your spiritual practice with the phases of the moon. Okay, okay. Right, so then we have a slightly different variation of... The, sorry, <laughs> I'm just distracted, sorry, and um, a slightly different rendition of meaning, that's, uh, it's going to be one of those days. Right, so, <laughs> powers of the willow, healing, helping in the grief and death, inspiration, fertility, love, protection, ruled by the moon again and its element water and under the care of the goddess Hecate, the tree of enchantment. The willow is a strong power in the thirteen trees of the Ogham. All her seasons in all her seasons, sorry, and shapes, the tree is a potent symbol of grief. The weeping willow bending over and drooping their tears into the water mirrored the feelings of those walking near them seeking solace. To where the willow was a sign of mourning or loss and was believed to bring the wearer's strength to endure Endure the oh, enjoy endure endure brain work please oh I'm so sorry guys endure the despair of putting up with this woman trying to speak English and clearly failing endure the despair of bereavement and enabling you to move forward come here water I'm having a drink of water clearly water is needed. It's in keeping. It's in keeping. <laughs> the druids are also supposed to have crafted willow sculptures giving rise to the Wicker Man uh, legend, I guess, which is so famous now because of the movies. Although, you know, people being burnt inside is slightly unlikely. <laughs> the willow in all her forms is an elemental tree of water and magic and is ruled by the moon which we know already okay in medieval times witches were said to worship the willow above all other trees because of its link with healing and hecate who taught sorcery and enchantment in the underworld of old and her daughter circe it was a Celtic belief that a white willow sapling might be planted above a grave so the spirit could rise up through the fast-growing branches to reach immortality. Okay, so that is an overview of some of the sort of spiritual and metaphysical and perhaps magical properties of willow. I'm going to talk about what is in the setup in front of you, why that's there, and then we're going to talk about sort of generalised magical uses of Willow. So in front of you, you have what is probably identifiable as a healing setup. Now, interestingly enough, even with my very first walk with the Ogham, Willow was the biggest healer for me out of all of the ogham and had a really strong energy that sort of pulled me right in and it was all about healing and water. It's interesting that, at least in my experience, Willow sometimes gets this really negative stereotype 
And it's it's interesting to me that any of the trees get negative stereotypes because I've noticed a few of them do, and I wonder how much of it is sort of a um, creation of folklore to try and frighten people away from the old ways of trees with the sort of advent of uh, other spiritual belief, more man-based spiritual belief rather than, you know, nature-based belief. But for me growing up I remember Willow being portrayed as sort of misery and sadness and there is obviously a grief element to the tree itself. There's obviously a death aspect and it, it for me, whenever there's a death aspect of anything in in anything, <laughs> uh, but particularly in this case I suppose trees and oakum and, and druidic work, people sort of have this innate fear of things that is associated with either sadness or death as if uh, sort of avoiding certain elements will avoid sadness or death in life when instead there should be celebration of the life that went before it and an understanding that not all death is a permanent state of being uh, in two fashions at least in in my belief anyway uh, one that we are reincarnated is something that I believe in uh, so death is not the end it's just the end of one lifetime and the other thing being that there are death cycles frequently in life. You know, certain cycles of things within our life end and death is just prevalent. But for me, Willow, as I engaged with it on an ogum level, and I tried to engage with it as freely and as openly as possible, ignoring the sort of preconceived notions that I was given as a youngster. <laughs> I don't know if that was picked up on camera but a crow just flew up onto the roof and landed. <laughs> oh god. So when I engaged with Willow myself it was very much about healing and crows in the roof. Um... <laughs> very much about healing rather than any other of the elements. Now, Willow is interesting in its energies that it clearly is one of these energies that has been utilised for so many different spiritual or, and or magical purposes. I mean, the, the list basically encompasses pretty much every type of magic there is. So, uh, right. Creativity, fertility, uh, female rites of passage, inspiration, binding, emotion, love, love divination, protection, healing. Uh, and then there was the other part which was talking about grief, lessons in death, uh, help with uh, sort of understanding the, the processes of life and death as well as grieving. And then, of course, growth and immortality. So, Willow really does encompass a huge array of different magical properties because of its nature, because it's so flexible. And I think it's three things to me stand out, which is funny, and I'll explain why in a minute. Three things about it stand out for me that it's, you know, it's, it's flexible in itself. Um, it's associated with the moon which has its uh, triple aspect if you like and then it's associated with water which is fluid meaning that it sort of its energy sort of creeps into all areas of magical property and purpose if that makes sense and I think it's just because it's so associated with the lunar cycles, which are constantly in motion, constantly shifting, that it means that Willow has an energy which is constantly growing and constantly overcoming and constantly sort of bending and weaving its way around 
obstacles and, and difficulties very much in the similar fashion to water and therefore touches each and every part of magical life. Uh, for anybody who has known me for a long time I'm, I'm quite funny about water. I, I think that water is the most incredible magical gift even on an everyday mundane level that we don't really appreciate perhaps as much as we should. It's also the, the water magic is the one that I have to work at a little bit more and it is the magic which personally I only pull out for the big stuff because I treat it with such a reverence uh, that you know it's only for deep healing. That being said I do bring the magic into the bathroom which I do more frequently but for the for the particular spell work for sitting down in front of a like a spell altar like this one and doing something very intently very purposefully with water that isn't sort of a daily integration um, water is the big gun basically so in front of us <laughs> we have a healing setup I, I was saying this I'm sure I was saying this water it goes where it wants it doesn't doesn't there's no water <laughs> mm -hmm. right so in front of you are some different crystals which I purpose I purposefully chose that weren't necessarily given in books uh, that I would associate with willow I have a water heart chakra based energy so we're going to zoom in a bit right so there's a big there's a big quartz there and then we have the uh, blue, it's a pea shoot votive, it's lovely, it smells gorgeous. And then we have uh, a multitude of crystals around the outside. So this is a setup for healing and the whole idea is that you would sort of integrate that with the energy of healing and it creates a sort of focal point in which to allow the, the energies of the candle and the crystals to combine and you sort of combine your energies into them and allow it to give you a soothing place in which to sit and start to feel better and it's sort of about changing your state of mind allowing your vibration to raise uh, to get yourself into the correct frequency if you like for healing so first and foremost the first stone which is always 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 given as being associated with the oakum sail or willow is moonstone now personally i prefer rainbow moonstone uh, so that's what's in here uh, i don't connect to normal moonstone as as well as i do rainbow moonstone so this is rainbow moonstone here and i don't know if i've got any shimmery piece i really want a nice shimmery piece of moonstone eventually these are all a little bit standard, but they're the, the much paler ones with the blue sheen through. Uh, and they, for me, put me in a mind much more of moonlight than the more orange ones do. Okay, and then the rest of them are chosen on based on my feeling. So quartz, clear quartz, is chosen there for a, a number of reasons. One, it's known as the healer's crystal. And we are on a healing based energy, at least for this setup, with the Willow Magic. So it's a good all rounder as well, which clearly Willow is. Willow has so many different applications that it's it becomes an almost an all round energy that if you had to perhaps work with one ogum and you couldn't work with any other and you really wanted to choose one that would have many influences and many impacts then willow would probably be the one that you would choose i'm not going to say beginner ogum because that sort of sounds a bit i don't know it sort of underestimates its power willow willow is very powerful and very special just like all the trees and all the ogum really are so I'm not going to call it that, but perhaps it's slightly more accessible because of its range. And then again, depending on how far you take it, perhaps it's one of the more complex. So I have clear quartz for that reason, because you can utilise clear quartz in a lot of different magical formats as well. So then we have 
very tiny pieces which are barely visible are kunzite. Kunzite is associated with the heart chakra water. It's the sort of all-round love crystal, self-love, healing, things of that nature. Then we have some, I will grab the book of stones in case I, my memory goes because it's been like that today apparently. So we have kunzite. Then we have aquamarine. Some aquamarine here. And some of the darker ones are aquamarine as well. So aquamarine is again water. And it is the heart chakra. It's interesting how healing often does start with the heart. And I guess it's the association of water which is so closely linked with our emotions. So often healing does start from start from the heart and uh, people who are particularly sensitive may find that the heart chakra requires perhaps a lot more healing. Okay, so aquamarine is good for calming and cooling, which again, associated with the element of water, as well as clear communication of one's highest truth. They are stones of the water element, bringing one in touch with the subconscious and the domains of spirits and our deepest emotion. Their energy is refreshing as a shower and under a cold waterfall. So there you go, that's aquamarine. I've just chosen all of these on sort of instinct, so there you go. <laughs> and then amazonite, which again is water. And the heart chakra. I'll quickly read from the Book of Storms. The Book of Storms is a stone of harmony, both within the self. It is a truth teller, a peacemaker, assisting in communicating one's true thoughts and over and feelings without succumbing to over emotionalism. The first step is activated by Amazonite's awakening of compassion through stimulation of the heart chakra. It also helps you take on board other people's points of view whilst expressing your own truth. Right, so there you go. Those are some crystals that I have picked uh, that you could utilise within Willow Magic. So, with Willow Magic being so broad, how do we as witches work with Willow? Well, personally, I'm going to say however you want. However you pick up on the energy, however it makes you feel. Is it very much about overcoming grief? Is it about healing? Is it about harmony? Is it about love? Is it about protection? Is it about inspiration? Is it about binding? Now, for me, Willow isn't my go-to protection. That's not how I connect to it. I connect to it from a much more water-based energy. So if I was looking at new moon energies, for example, let's do, do the moon phases. Oh, by the way, Big Mama's here. Because Big Mama is always here for healing, healing work. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she demands attention. It's, it's not my fault. She's a demanding lady. Uh, <laughs> right, so for new moon magic, if I was working with new moon and I wanted to incorporate energies of willow, I would probably do some sort of water scrying. So... It connects us with the death energy. That means that it can take us 
deeper into ourselves, into our past lives, if we so wish. It can take us into the deepest recesses of our emotional sort of psyche. And if you really wanted to scry at the time of the new moon with water, then you can do it in a number of ways. So probably one of the most frequently given ways for water is to have a black bowl with water in it. It's, it doesn't have to be. I mean, you can go out into nature. If you can go out into nature and you can find a natural stream and scry in there, then that probably be even better. But uh, um, black bowls of water are the most frequently given in sort of indoor spaces, I think, would be the fairest way of putting it. So you could use willow energies to scry, you could place willow leaves in the water, you could even sort of set intentions that way for creativity for the, the coming months. Help me to reach my emotional goals and placing willow into water and sort of... You could bathe with that water, you could anoint yourself or your space with that water and you could you know just imbue it with your intent so in the waxing phase growth so you would probably go with love magic in the growth phase if you wanted to use willow with waxing and it can be self-love it can be love on any level you know you can have a friendship style love you can have a romantic passionate style love you can have a self-healing style love you can have a generalized love for the planet trying to sort of breed a more love in the world type energy anything where the growth of love is required within the, the waxing so for full moon if it were me I'd go healing in the full moon um, you can do healing in the waning moon to lessen influences as well, but for full on healing work, then the full moon is probably your best bet. It has sort of the most powers of manifestation, and for me, it's the strongest energy. So that's the one I would personally choose. We already did a, a, a sort of suggested love thing, which was the, the weaving of the, the branches from earlier. So for, I, this is my healing setup for, for Willow. I would create a space, I would invoke the energies of Willow. There's gonna be a meditation video after this as long as, <laughs> as, long as I can think straight by that point. Um, that's what I would do with it. And then for waning, I would, I would maybe create a Willow broom. Like you could create a mini one, like a, a little one. And use that for banishing work. Banishing anything that no longer serves and is causing you emotional heartache. Yeah. That's what I would go with. And then if, if you really wanted to use Willow for binding, that would maybe be Dark Moon work. I'm a little bit hesitant with the whole binding thing and not because I'm hesitant about the binding thing because I think it's it can be really troublesome to bind somebody to you like to attach their energy to you can be quite a risky thing so and I think binding gets really misused like people think that it's going to get rid of somebody and that's banishing it's not binding <sighs> I always like cry when I see people confusing the two because it can be quite dangerous to bind somebody to you. Right. And lastly, I think one of the really beautiful things that we haven't really talked to about in depth is Willow's capacity to heal those that are grieving. Willow is known as the tree of immortality and the notion of the Celts sort of placing willow saplings above graves is, is a hugely evocative image of the spirit travelling up through the, 
the willow and passing on into the realm of the immortal to be reborn. Grieving is one of these things and absolutely nothing can prepare you for it. And it comes about in odd ways and it hurts in odd ways long after the fact. And I think that given we Willow's healing energy is so powerful, I think it's perhaps the only tree ogum that can truly tackle healing grief and mourning. It, t it talks to us about the fact that uh, it's an ongoing process. Willow can be cut down and, and grow again from, from its fallen branches. It talks about the endurance of spirit, be it ours or be it those that have passed on. It talks to us of the heavy emotions, you know, the, the emotions that get deep into our emotional psyche, that are deep within the ocean of us. And it, it sort of plays into the realm of sleep, which can often be greatly disturbed by the grieving process. In terms of spell work, I'm not going to particularly suggest one form of anything for grieving, because it's personal. It's personal and it's sad, and there are many, many different ways to grieve, and it's really one of those individual things, but I think that Willow really does have this power, and that is probably where its power really, really shines through. So that's going to be it for this video. I'm sorry it was so late. It was the last day of Willow. We managed it. We got in. <laughs> it's It's been interesting that Willow has actually been bringing about all the things to the fore in my life that uh, it stands for. Right. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Many blessings.